Hello, I'm Wendy Wilson, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Realizing Potential. Today I have with me in the studio a gentleman. He's no stranger to Albany State University. Uh, we're very fond of him and certainly appreciative of the expertise that he brings uh, in support of the foundation. And we have a collaboration with him that we are super excited about. It's been going on for a little bit over a year now. And so he came back just to check on us and again, uh, lend his knowledge and to help the, uh, the university advance. He's none other than Mr. Andy Cole. How are you today? Good, very good, Wendy. Good, good. Good to see you again. Glad Thank to you. be here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Always excited to have you. Tell us a little bit about your background and what led up to your role with the Wallace Foundation and then we'll talk about the actual collaboration that we have with Albany State University. Okay, well, Wendy, about uh, well, a few years ago, uh, I was uh, the Director of Employee Performance and Development in Fairfax County Public Schools in Virginia, and uh, I, I won a $5 million grant from the Wallace Foundation. And so I've just actually been evolving ever since, and that, that grant focused on the development of pipeline. Mm. a principal pipeline. So after I left the uh, school system, I then started working with the foundation. And uh, Wallace is a, a large foundation. Uh, it's actually uh, outgrowth of Reader's Digest. Okay. So it used to be called the Reader's Digest uh, Fund. It's now the Wallace Foundation. It's a large foundation, about $1.6 billion. Mm. Um, and they focus on several things, arts uh, and education leadership. And um, so part of this process has been an ongoing process for me in developing my personal career, as well as developing with the foundation on different initiatives. And so the exciting initiative is the university preparation, principal preparation initiative that uh, Albany State is a part of. Absolutely. And so, um, again, we were excited to receive the support, and I believe we're going into our, have we just completed our first year cycle, or it's a little bit longer? Yeah, actually, the first year is actually, I think, about 14, 16 months. Okay. Um, so it's not actually a year. We call it the first year, but it's actually a little bit longer. Okay. Um, and it's, it's actually started almost we're almost two years ago when when uh, Wallace did a environmental scan and looked for universities that had the capacity to make significant changes and those changes around their principal preparation program and their willingness to um, re-engineer their programs and and work with partners sure and so Albany was one of the 26 uh, universities that were invited to come to New York City to hear about the initiative and to be invited to apply and they applied and now we're here. Outstanding, outstanding. Let's, let's speak to our layman or our novice uh, viewers out there as it relates to the importance of mm -hmm. educational leadership why the Wallace Foundation uh, saw fit to, this is something that we want to focus on, and how does this better serve our uh, academic entities across the country? Okay, that's a great question. One of the reasons that Wallace is focused on uh, education leadership is just numbers. Uh, you know, there's, there's hundreds and thousands of, of teachers, but those teachers are impacted even greater by principals. And so the, the return on investment for working with principals is actually, a, a, you, you get a lot more from that. And the research has told us that, uh, that really teacher retention um, and student achievement are achieved by really highly active and highly effective principals in each school. I see. Especially for kids that need it the most. Mm -hmm. So for uh, economically disadvantaged kids um, they need 
actually more focus and, and more leadership in their school. So that's the reason why Wallace has begun to focus on that. Great. We have a great education program here, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that's one of the reasons why Albany State Absolutely. was invited to the table. Absolutely. Right. So, um, supplemental, if, if you will. Certainly, we, we provide all the mechanics and the components in terms of developing those educational leaders. Mm -hmm. um, and once they've advanced and they find themselves in the principal roles, what kind of type of guidance does the Wallace Foundation then provide, or um, development, if you will, to Albany State University and ask that they then feed or help in partnering uh, with those uh, principals? Well, the, the, <coughs> the main ingredient of the work and the strength of uh, actually Albany State is in partnership. Okay. And they've been partnering with uh, districts around the area and those districts have aligned their work with Albany's development of principals. So we're gonna get uh, hopefully a through line from the work that Albany does through to the work that the districts do to the principals and then eventually to the students that they're gonna be serving. Sure. So I think that the, the strength of this program has been um, the, the, um, the robustness of the partnerships. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, the, the partnerships within Albany State, so there's there's a lot of people involved within the uh, university, not just in the groups that are working directly with the program, but also just in support of the program. And then you have th these districts that are have signed on to be a part of this process. And then you have the state, who actually has been an active and engaged partner in working with Albany State. So the strength of this program is really the partnership. Um, well, the strength of all the programs that we have, and we have seven other universities involved, but specifically the strength of Albany State has been the, the robustness of the partnership that they've been able to develop. Very good. Let's, um, I, I'm curious to learn of, um, of your opinion on this, and, and certainly you've had a, a role mm. um, in the educational process, um, K through 12, and then mm. with higher ed as well. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, many areas around the country are addressing the needs or attempting to address the needs of underserved populations. And um, that expands um, or intensifies, you will, uh, the whole educational process. Mm -hmm. How has that evolved, uh, for better or worse, over the years, in, in your opinion? Certainly the Wallace Foundation is playing a critical role in that. And um, if it has not gotten any better, what are some of the steps that you all particularly are taking place in addition to this initiative? Well, I think some of the work has gotten um, much better Great. over time. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you take 20 or 30 years ago, you would have a gym teacher that was designated as a principal mm. because supposedly they knew discipline and they knew how to manage uh, the school. But over the course of time, we really started to focus on instructional leadership. And I think that's the biggest change that's gone on okay. over the last few years. But specifically, understanding how different kids learn differently. Uh, and setting an environment in which kids can learn. Es that's especially important for um, kids that have more needs. Yes. So the more needs you have, the more ability you, you need in a principal. And so I think the other thing is to being really clear on what it means to be an instructional leader is really, I think, the most critical change over the last few years. Okay, okay, outstanding. And so this, this relationship, this partnership with Albany State University, let's share with our viewers what that will specifically entail. The timeline, um, uh, in terms of you all have infused certainly some talent and some guidance. Is there mm -hmm. some financial support that has been provided? Yeah, there's, there's, there's been a little, a little <laughs> bit of financial support uh, <laughs> given. Uh, we, we anticipate, I think it's about $4.5 million. Very good to the, the university over the next few years. Mm -hmm. um, that focus, uh, some of that money goes directly into the university, mm -hmm. some of it is uh, working with the state, some of it is working with the districts. Um, but I think, um, and, and I've heard this often, <coughs> um, that what Wallace brings to the table 
is money, obviously, but it's also the networking opportunity and the availability to get um, uh, resources to bear on the work that's being done. So besides the work that's provided, uh, the money that's provided and resources provided to um, Albany State, they're also providing some partners. Right. And so uh, the Gwinnett County has been working with Albany. Um, the New York City Leadership Academy has been working with Albany State. The uh, uh, EDC, uh, Education Development Center, has been working. So there's a lot of different organizations that are working that actually um, Albany doesn't have to pay for. Very good. They're, they're actually brought in and we provide some resources that are um, non-direct funded resources, mm -hmm. but I think are, are an advantage. Um, I think the <laughs> other thing is the uh, opportunity to network with the other six uh, universities. Excellent. And so each one is picked, was chosen for s different strengths. Mm -hmm. And so when you put them all together, people get an opportunity to actually interact with uh, other universities in like work. Um, so for instance, next month um, they'll be going to Denver and there's a faculty uh, professional learning community that will be will be engaged in. There's a state uh, professional learning community that has seven states involved in this work. Right. Um, there's also a combined uh, professional learning community that happens every, well, it's twice a year in New York City where everybody's engaged with the work. So besides the, f the, the direct resources, there's also indirect resources that are provided. That's critical, and oftentimes um, we, we lose sight of that, the value and the importance of, of that. Um, we approach uh, uh, initiatives or endeavors with the mindset that we have to start from scratch, mm -hmm. um, reinventing the wheel, and there are some best practices that already exist. So again, the value and the importance of partnering and collaborating with, with mm -hmm. like entities is, is important. When you were speaking earlier, I was reminded of um, the author, Jonathan Kozel, who wrote Savage Inequalities. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the takeaways that I think a lot of educational systems uh, were able to uh, come away with, that there, uh, entities or organizations or systems just like mine having similar challenges um, and so what were they able to then do to improve and thus the the partnerships and the um, linking up so that that's key yeah it is and and each university is, has a different context okay but though but what's similar is that there's similar challenges in making sure that they they produce people capable of making change and I think that when they sit down and talk with each other, they're actually seeing how that, how one, how challenging that is, but also how doable it is. Sure. And so th it's an exciting when they get together. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Uh, uh, t before we wrap up, uh, share with the viewers what, what you relate your passion for education um, has been. You certainly could have said, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, uh, sit back and, and relax after your whole the K through 12 experience um, and then when the Wallace Foundation then then tapped you and said hey uh, we need your expertise so but there was something I, that made you say yes well yeah I think I think my own personal background okay uh, I'm, I'm from Pittsburgh uh, Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and um, and we had some challenges as I was growing up mm -hmm. and we had uh, good people involved in education and some not so good. Yes. Um, and I actually was involved in a rather segregated environment. And in, in thinking through of how I made it and how some of my friends didn't, sure. it was that we're actually smarter than I was. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the, the luck of the draw isn't good enough. Indeed. We, we have to have a systemic way of supporting education. Yes. And it can't be, well, you know, if you get a certain teacher or if you get a certain principal or you're in a certain school, everybody has to have that capacity to, to fulfill their ambition and, and, and um, goals in life. And so that became a passion for me and leadership because I see the difference that leadership makes. Mm -hmm. It makes a significant difference in the work that everybody does regardless of the field. Um, regardless of the level. You know, it's interesting 
one of the things that's very, very interesting about schools is that I've never seen a great school that was dirty. Hmm. In, when, when you have a great school, everybody rises. That's right. Every, everybody in the group rises. And that's true also in every endeavor. When, when you have a team, everybody is great on the team sure. as opposed to, you know, we have, you know, these random acts of greatness. Right. So the aesthetics play a role, the pride that people take in, in their, um, their, their role or their, their responsibilities and their respective uh, positions certainly uh, factor in. Uh, you reminded me um, when I was probably in the th maybe second or third grade and I, w I attended a parochial school. Uh, there was always a young man, uh, and I, he stopped in the, maybe the fourth or fifth grade. And I'll, I don't remember his last name, but interesting enough, I remember his first name and his name was Aaron. And he was always just the student that just the, t the teacher had to give him attention because he was just all over this mm -hmm. behavioral issues. So when you mentioned the leadership, I was struck by, um, in fact, it was Sister Carol that taught the class. Uh, but it, he was extremely disruptive. The reason he was extremely disruptive is because he was bored. And she had the um, foresight to say something's going on here. But what was actually in fact going on is he was tested and it was discovered that he was a gifted student. Mm -hmm. And how often does that play out in classrooms? But there are no Sister Carols or there are no leaders that will then take the time to say, let's do a little investigation to find out what we're actually dealing with. And so how many children have then been lost in the system? Not in fact because they have behavioral issues that we either don't want to deal with or, or address or, or figure out what the, what the catalyst is for that. Um, and so that the cure for whatever is then lost because we did not focus or someone did not take a leadership role to then focus and try to identify what was actually going on with that student. Yeah, you know, I think it's interesting because <coughs> I think that plays out not just with kids, but adults, too. Mm. So if people don't recognize people's talent, people yes. start acting out. Yes. And, and, <laughs> and they, they feel like they're, they're put in a, a hole somewhere mm -hmm. and they start acting right. out in different ways. And I think that that's the, the real challenge is seeing talent in all of its different forms. Sure. Also in its developmental form. So we've gotten to a point in our society that we're more ATM Mm. Everything's instant. Instant, you're absolutely you know, right. We, we, so if, you're do, if you don't show potential instantly, mm -hmm. then we, we don't think you have it. But um, I, I think that the real talent for leadership is being able to see talent in all of its different yes. forms and to be able to bring it out and help it grow and develop. It's easy, um, it's really easy to do that with uh, kids or adults that already show all their potential. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole lot of people that takes a little more time Absolutely. and they need a little more support. And I think that that's the challenge for leadership. Sure, sure. The other part, the other element that's, that's also key is if you see it, then you too, then you as an individual, as a leader, have to be comfortable with helping to bring that to fruition and not be intimidated or threatened by that. That happens a lot of times when people who, they're not true leaders, but they, they hold leadership roles. Yes. And because of those factors, then I'm going to stifle your development. So I'm sure that's part of the whole yeah. educational process yeah, as well. Yeah, that's, that's especially true for gifted kids or people. Yes. People get afraid of their giftedness mm -hmm. um, and, and can't actually manage it. And so, and by manage it, I mean, you know, it's not uh, routinized. It's, it's very different. It's a different way of thinking. It's Indeed. a different way of doing things. And people sometimes don't like different. Sure. They like things to be the same cookie cutter. <laughs> No, you know, I so. know, yeah. Because it makes our work easier. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Yeah, the resistance to change is, is very real. Yeah. And it's the, and, the, and I, I get it to a certain degree because it's the unknown. How will that then affect me? Which speaks to the importance of constantly developing yourself to make yourself viable and relevant, whatever the environment is. And that's why I have a job because yeah. <laughs> things are different. And so, it, so being able to see the difference is is part of my job sure sure well you obviously do it very well how long have you been with wallace foundation now 
Uh, actually, in this iteration, about seven years. Okay, okay, yeah. good, good, good. Well, we're excited. Uh, we thank you for all that you, you do in support of, of Albany State University, and I, I know the Wallace Foundation is certainly proud of uh, what you've been able to achieve for them as, as a representative. And so uh, I won't, uh, I could talk to you all day long, but as you and I discussed earlier, they've got a, a heavy slate of uh, <laughs> meetings and activities for you, Lou, try to take yeah. advantage of your presence here today. But thank you um, on behalf of Albany State University for what you do, certainly the contributions of the Wallace Foundation in helping us to kind of la navigate uh, this whole educational process in Southwest Georgia. Thank you, Wendy. As always, I enjoy talking Same with you. Same here. It's always know that you're welcome back. Thank you. Viewers, thank you so much for joining me for this edition of Realizing Potential. I'm Wendy Wilson, and I'll see you next time.